Enemy spotted. This episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. You'd be hard pressed to come up with a build that had a greater impact on the metagame in 2020 than the Bat build. And while they certainly do have an uncanny affinity for spawning mutated zoonotic viruses, there's a lot more to bats than just that. The Bat build is unique in several ways, so today we're breaking down the Bat build to discuss its stats, special abilities, matchup spread, unique class variants, and finally where they place overall in the tier list. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Bat sports a pretty wide range of both high and low stats. Their key stat is mobility, of course, and it's kind of a given that any flying build will have high aerial mobility but be lacking in their other movement options. Bats take this a step further though, having thinner, more flexible wings that cover both their arms and legs that allow for far greater speed and precision of movement mid-air than most bird builds can achieve. In fact, while technically peregrine falcons can reach higher speeds during their dives, bats actually hold the record for the fastest flight speed in the game. This incredible mobility comes at a cost though, as we'll see with the bats' other stats. Bats have some of the weakest defenses in the game. Their thin, membranous wings are far less resistant to tears and scratches than feathered wings, meaning even a single hit from a relatively weak attack or mid-air collision might mean game over for a bat player. The bat's other stats also tend to be quite low. They aren't exactly stealthy flyers and make much more noise than other nocturnal aerial builds like the owl. They also have pretty abysmal damage output. This makes sense though as they don't really need it for offense, and if they're ever attacked, their defense and HP are so low that it would already be too late to strike back. So it's actually optimal to just stick to their hypermobile strategy and hope their other special abilities can carry them. Before we get into discussing special abilities, first we have to break down the different variations within the bat class, since the most important special abilities are not shared among all bats. All of these variations fall into one of two categories, microbats and megabats. Microbats are smaller and have a highly specialized nocturnal playstyle. They heavily favored spending evolution points on their hearing sense rather than vision, and so their eyes are quite small and not very useful. However, in addition to having excellent hearing, the Microbat's heavy investment into the auditory skill tree grants them access to an extremely powerful unique ability, Echolocation. Echolocation is a sound-based perception perk that allows the user to completely negate any stealth bonuses a player would normally have because of camouflage. It also allows bats to track the location of other flying players in the air, giving them greatly increased accuracy against airborne targets. It also greatly lowers the risk of collision while flying in tightly packed groups or through dense forests. This ability is definitely the most impressive aspect of the bat build, and the most integral to making their nocturnal playstyle viable. While most microbats survive entirely via the XP they get from PvP against flying insects, the Microbat faction also contains the Vampire Bat, a strange parasitic build that uses its flight ability to stealthily drain small amounts of HP from other players. While I like the concept in theory, I feel like the Bloodsucker playstyle is done much more effectively by builds like the Mosquito and Tick, both of which have high enough stealth to actually succeed in their attacks even when the target is wide awake. Vampire Bats, on the other hand, are not stealthy enough to drain a full blood meal from a conscious target. And given their extremely low defense, they cannot risk taking a hit while draining HP. It's likely that the Vampire Bats had far more success back before the truly giant mammal builds got banned, as these mammals would have had much more difficulty detecting and swatting away such a small flying parasite. Aside from also having the ability to fly, the Megabat faction has a very different strategy than Microbats. The Megabat player base is diurnal, and as such, they did not spec far into the auditory skill tree at the cost of their vision. Quite the opposite, in fact. Megabats have excellent vision, but they cannot use the echolocation ability. In theory, this is a better strategy. Rather than spending a bunch of evolution points on the expensive high-level sonar ability, it's more efficient to just go for a more standard vision upgrade, and still have plenty of points left over to pump into things like direct base stat boosts. This is what allows Megabats to grow several times larger than their nocturnal cousins. Now, due to their lack of echolocation, there's pretty much no way they could attack flying insects midair with any sort of accuracy. So Megabats opt for an herbivorous playstyle, and use their power of flight to access the best loot, similar to parrots. 
Despite being a much easier playstyle, I actually think it's nearly as viable as the microbat strategy, provided there's enough fruit around to sustain the energy needs required by a flying mammal. So how do bats fare against their most common encounters? As I said before, microbats have excellent matchups against flying insects. That's pretty much a given since they're specifically specialized for that matchup. Moths in particular have actually started specking into their own sonar abilities in order to jam bat echolocation so that they aren't such a free kill all the time. This still has a long way to go before it has much of an effect on the matchup though. Microbats are also occasionally able to score kills on amphibian players, though personally I see this as more of an indictment of the frog's abysmal defensive stats than it is praise of the bat's offensive ability. Surprisingly, the biggest threats to bats are stationary ambush builds, since echolocation doesn't do a great job picking out other players who aren't moving. Snakes in particular can detect them using their heat vision, and can lash out and score a kill while they're passing by. Spiderwebs can pose a major problem to careless bat players too, as most bats are actually light enough to be restrained mid-flight if they run into them. However, skilled bat players can actually pinpoint the spider player via echolocation and snatch them right out of their web, so this matchup is by no means one-sided. Echolocation also allows bats to detect players that have made the mistake of being at the surface of the water, even in the dark. Making an attack on one of these targets is a bit of a gamble too, though. Megabats, in contrast, have great difficulty dealing with birds of prey. Since they have no sonar for early detection of an incoming attack, they can be taken down both mid-flight and while hiding in trees by aggressive raptor players. However, with their large frame, they're also far better in the intimidation department, meaning they can frighten players away who might challenge their control over the best loot sources. Their slightly higher defensive stats, while still not great, can also let them tank a hit or two if they get lucky. Wouldn't exactly rely on this, but still, credit where credit is due. The last thing to mention is the bat's matchup against disease. So bats actually have one of the highest disease resistances in the game, something they really do need because they live in such close quarters with each other. Because of this, the pathogen mains who do target bats have to spec into some extremely powerful virulence perks, which is why the pathogens that switch targets from bats to something else tend to be quite difficult for non-bat mains to fend off. Their incredible immune systems seem to have the secondary effect of granting bats unnaturally long lives. Most builds with similar metabolisms and sizes to bats only live a fraction as long. Overall, I think the bat sits at a comfortable C tier. Their choice of abilities is expensive, and I'm not entirely sure that it has paid off when weighted against the sacrifices they had to make to their base stats. Of the three flying factions in the game, I actually think bats rank the lowest overall. Birds have them beat in terms of versatility and practicality, as they can fly longer distances and have more durable wings. Insects have bats beat in terms of defense, being able to fly while still rocking some pretty solid armor. Nonetheless, the bat's flight precision is quite respectable, and highly skilled bat players can accomplish quite a lot using the bat's limited tools. I expect the bat's position on the tier list to rise as the current meta continues to centralize around the city biome, something microbats excel at. The bat's incredible disease resistance is also not to be overlooked. In fact, human data miners are trying to crack the code to see if the bat's immunity is something that can be used as a model for advancing the human's medicine ability. This is the subject of the excellent documentary series Breakthrough, which chronicles the research that was done this year regarding the huge nerfs the human player base had to deal with in 2020. You can watch the whole series right now by signing up for CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming service with thousands of amazing documentaries and nonfiction titles. I've been plugging them all year, and for good reason. The stuff on there is top-notch. Their breakthrough series on bat immunity is fascinating, but they've also got some excellent classics, like Walking with Dinosaurs and Nigel Marvin's Sea Monsters, two titles I've rewatched many times just for fun. The membership is an incredible 41% off right now, meaning you can get a year's membership for less than $12 a year. You'll also get access to my own streaming platform, Nebula, when you do, as we've partnered with CuriosityStream to bundle our services. I've got some pretty wild originals planned for Nebula in 2021, which you won't want to miss. So to get your all access pass to CuriosityStream and Nebula for the new year, head to curiositystream.com slash or click the link in the description. Special thanks to CuriosityStream for literally sponsoring every single video I made this year, and also a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon. Here's hoping the 2021 update is a good one.